will meet us there. Let's see where we are. So um, this is when Moses, after he complained to God, the story didn't end there. And it says that in chapter 6, 6 through 7, God said, I will deliver you, I will redeem you. I will take you for my people and I will be your God and you will know that I am the Lord God who brought you out of the burdens of the Egyptians. So the story didn't end when Moses got hit and when the Israelites got hit. The story did not end there. And um, Ginger, I'm going to go ahead and get you to come up if you can. And Jill's got some things she's going to be passing out, but it's going to be up on the screen too. And um, in Hosea um, 2, 15 through 16, which is one of the places that the Lord took me when I was in a really dark season where I, I did not feel the presence of God for three years. And guys, if I don't feel the presence of God for three years, I'm, I'm just ready for heaven. I'm just like, okay, I'll go to heaven. But then I realized that even the presence of God had become an idol to me. I was in a season of hiddenness and God was taking me there so that he could refine me and teach me that he was a good, good father. And so um, in Hosea 2.15, he says, what he did is he, he takes, you know, Israel, this is a, a picture, an illustration of Israel, and he takes her into the wilderness, and he said so that she would know who he was in the wilderness, and he says, I will give her vineyards from there, from the wilderness. He's going to give her vineyards from the wilderness, because it's God that's doing this thing. And he says, and the valley of Achor, which means suffering, in the valley of Achor as a door of hope. And she will sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day that she came out of the land of Egypt. And it will come about in that day, declares the Lord, that you will call me Ishi, which translates husband, and you will no longer call me Bali, which translates his master. So guys, our door of hope is in the wilderness. And in Psalm 84, it says that when we pass through the valley of trouble, we make it a spring because we go from strength to strength. Guys, your suffering does not determine your identity, but it'll, it'll reveal your identity if you allow it. And it'll re reveal what's not your identity. Because the first thing that we do when we go into suffering is usually our flesh just starts rising up. You know, it's just like, what did I do wrong? What do I need to do right? What do I need to do different? What do I need to pray? Maybe I need to fast this. Maybe I need to do that. Maybe I just don't want to go to church anymore. God doesn't love me. He doesn't meet me. And all of those flesh things come up, but we can let them come on up, and then we can give them to him, and then we can let the truth of who he is shine in us and through us because that's our identity. It's who we are in him, and that's inseparable. That's an inseparable truth. When he died for sin, he died for all of your sin, from the beginning of your life to the end of your life, and he said it's finished. He said it's finished. So in the Passion Translation, it says, even when their paths wind through the dark valley of tears, they dig deep to find a pleasant pool where others only find pain he gives them a brook of blessing and then one more well I'm gonna one more I'll read those who sow in tears shall reap in joyful shouting <laughs> I want us to stand together and I want us to read St. Patrick's breastplate together So some of you have it on sheets. If you want to read it from your sheet, you can, or if you want to read it from the screen. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. I arise today through the strength of Christ's birth with his baptism, through the strength of his crucifixion with his burial, through the strength of his resurrection with his ascension, through the strength of his descent for the judgment of doom. I arise today through the strength of the love of cherubim, in the obedience of angels, in the service of archangels, in the hope of resurrection to meet with reward, in the prayer of patriarchs, in the predictions of prophets, 
in the preaching of apostles, in the faith of confessors, in the innocence of holy virgins, in the deeds of righteous men. I arise today through the strength of heaven, the light of the sun, the radiance of the moon, the splendor of fire, the speed of lightning, the swiftness of wind, the depth of the sea, the stability of the earth, the firmness of rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me from snares of devils, from temptation of vices, from everyone who shall wish me ill afar and near. I summon today all these powers between me and those evils against every cruel and merciless power that may oppose my body and soul, against incantations of false prophets, against black laws of pagandom, against false laws of heretics, against craft of idolatry, against spells of witches and smiths and wizards, against every knowledge that corrupts man's body and soul, Christ to shield me today against poison, against burning, against drowning, against wounding, so that there may come to me an abundance of reward. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. Remain standing and I want to pray over you because some of you guys have been in a season where you have been hit so very hard. You've been hit so very hard. I've been in a season that I have been hit so very hard. And I, when I remember on, on December 13th, I was with a group of healers that we kind of get together with about once a month from this area. And we were just all sharing our life and sharing the things that are going on. We're real transparent and vulnerable with each other. Again, community, guys, community. And I was sharing with them everything that's going on. They were sharing their lives. And when we got to the end, we all prayed for one another. It was December 13th, December 13th. And I drove from there down to Alabama to hang out with some friends that are like family, my um, first spiritual mentor who was my youth pastor when I was growing up and the person that really was Jesus in skin and revealed Jesus and I went down and I'm hanging out with them and it was really good and I came back and we had Christmas and it was really good and all of those hits that had been coming and there guys there were so many hits the people that have walked with me closely you know I some of my intercessors are in this group there were so many hits and I just felt like the enemy had beaten me down into a ditch and was just kicking me and kicking me and kicking me every day. And then everything shifted. And we got together with that group of healers about two weeks ago, and Christine Stroop looked at me and she said, has it shifted since we prayed? And I was like, oh my gosh, wait a minute. <laughs> it has shifted since we prayed. Guys, prayer is powerful. So because it shifted since we prayed, and she prayed that over me, and we prayed together, I'm carrying that today to you. Some of you need a shift today. Some of you need to shift out of this season of the punches and the punches and the punches and the punches, whether they're coming financially, physically, emotionally, relationally. Some of you guys need a shift today. And I want to pray that shift over you. 
We want to take our eyes off of the thing that's causing our suffering and find the door of hope. So if you can just take a minute to close your eyes. If, if you're more comfortable connecting with God by sitting down, if you need to move to another area in the room, like whatever you need to do to have connection with the Lord, I want you to just be able to do that. There's freedom here because I know Mike. <laughs> there is freedom in this house. Lord, we need a shift. <laughs> we need a shift today. Guys, St. Patrick went back to the place where he was enslaved, and it was in that place that he had authority. So I don't know how the enemy has hit you. I don't know how you've been hit the hardest. I don't know what that looks like. But I can tell you one thing, it's probably your area of authority. Or he wouldn't care. And when we position ourselves to find the door of hope, we will have authority over the thing that he keeps hitting us with and hitting us with and hitting us with. So, Lord, today we position ourselves before you, and, Lord, we ask, because for each one it's going to be different. Where is our door of hope, Lord? What does it look like today? How do we encounter you in this place? Lord, I pray before every person that is here today that is saying yes to you that you would reveal your door of hope. Lord, thank you that circumstances and situations do not have to change for us to discover that love never fails. It never fails. It never fails because you never fail and you are love. And so, Father, I pray over the people here today that you would shift them, Lord, to find that door of hope and Lord, we know that you are the door. You are the door. We're only in because of you, because of your death on a cross, because of your blood, because of your stripes, because of your resurrection. You are the door that brought us into the Holy of Holies that we could meet with you. Anytime we call out to you, Lord, any time of any day, any moment, right now, Lord, thank you that in Hebrews 1, 14, you said that your angels are ministering spirits sent to render service to those of inherit, us that inherit salvation. So, Lord, I pray for the ministry of your angels in this place today. We ask for your angels to come and to minister, to make that shift in us, Lord, to move us to the door, to move us through the door, Lord, to move us into union with you, Lord, that we may know you, that we may know you in the midst of our suffering, that we may know you, The early Christians sang as lions were eating them because they knew him. They knew him and they sang, guys, it's time for us to sing again. It's time for us to sing again in our wilderness. It's time for us to sing again in our circumstances. Lord, give us a song. And if you don't feel like singing, sing, sing. When you don't feel like singing, sing. If you don't sing, turn on worship music. If you're a words person, open up the word of God and ask him to speak and show you your door because every single person in here, you have a door. He is your door. There's no one in here that doesn't have him as an answer. You're not that special. He didn't choose one of you and say, except for you. He's choosing all of you. He's calling all of you. He has a call on every one of you. He has a door for every one of you. And you're not powerful enough to mess that, but I've messed up. I've messed up so much. You know what? You're not powerful enough. Just repent and turn back and say, God, I've messed up. But I want you today. I want you as my life. 
Nothing else brings me life but you. And in you, it's abundant. No 